policy on one thing and get that done. And what I'd like that to be is stable coins because as a payment system right now, it would be very, very productive to bring forward some policy on stable coins and let the market compete. Now, I personally prefer ones that are backed by hard assets like the US dollar, but there's many ideas out there. Some work, some don't. Obviously, what happened with Luna was a bad outcome, but that's okay. This is an nascent industry, and we're trying different ideas, but the, the need for an international payment system is so huge and so uh, such a huge opportunity to save costs, to, to provide transparency, auditability, liquidity, speed, all of those things. That's what I'm suggesting. Let's pick one thing and bring policy on stable coins. Let's nail that. And then we'll move into Bitcoin. We'll move into blockchain. We'll move into other things, but NFTs. But let's nail one thing that to get it. In other words, we got to move forward on something here. And I'll tell you why. For all of the people in the crypto universe, and there are many that don't think we need regulation, let me point something out that would get everybody on board. It's a very simple quantum mathematics. And here's how it works. The majority of invested capital on earth is held by sovereign and pension plans, about 90 plus percent of it. They own zero crypto, nothing. And so for all the excitement about Bitcoin, 800 billion, that is absolutely a giant nothing burger. It is totally irrelevant. It's not held by any institutions that matter. Now, I'm an indexer and I've talked about this many, many times. In, there's many indexers in the world, but we, we, we service sovereign funds, pension plans. Let's say you're an oil rich country in the Middle East. You're making 250 million cash a day, US dollars, in oil revenues. You don't want to reinvest in oil. You want to invest in every other sector. So they'll go to an indexer like me and say, index the S&P 500, less energy, less airlines. That's the kind of index we do. And, I, and so we see these fund flows. Trillions of the department won't allow it because the SEC hasn't ruled on it yet. And Larry Fink doesn't like it. And he's our biggest money manager and all those other reasons. But they would allocate 50 to 100 basis points. Now, when you're running a trillion dollar mandate or an $800 billion mandate, which is some of the size of these funds, that's a ton of money. And that's a huge amount of demand that would come into the market. And as Bitcoin prices went past that 1% allocation, let's say, they'd sell it back down to 1%. But just importantly, if it dropped below 1%, they'd buy it back up. So there'd be an eternal bid forever. The volatility would drop dramatically. There'd be price appreciation in Bitcoin. It would be good for everybody involved in crypto. But we can't do it without policy. And so everybody should just get off this, let's be rogue, let's be crypto cowboys. Forget all that crap. It's time to get this real and get a tremendous amount of capital going into crypto because it's policy and it gets regulated and it's good for 10 years because it adds so much liquidity, so much productivity, so much transparency, so much auditability. It's so much better than what we're doing right now, which is so expensive and so slow. If I want to transfer capital over to Zurich to buy Nestle stock in Swiss francs, it takes me days and it costs me a fortune and it's incredibly inefficient. I could do it in two seconds with a stable coin. And I can't yet because we don't have policy on both sides of the ocean that let me do that, but it's coming one day. And, and I think crypto and blockchain and the services and fi financial transactions, microtransactions, all of it are going to lend itself to this blockchain auditability, transparency, the ledger system. It all makes sense to me. And I think regulators are starting to figure that out. Now, as an investor, I don't know which of these chains is going to win. Is Solana going to be Polygon? Should I be in Pollen? What about, you know, all of the others? Ethereum, of course, the big one right now, but too slow for many, many financial services. What's going on with 32 different coins and tokens? I have no idea which ones will win over the next five years, but I don't need them all to win. I just need a few to win. And that's what diversification is all about. And I've made some investments in the infrastructure. You know that old adage in the gold rush, you were better owning and selling picks and shovels and jeans than you were trying to find gold because that was very hard to do. The infrastructure of crypto are companies like FTX, I'm a shareholder, Circle, I'm a shareholder, Wonderfy, I'm a shareholder, Immutable Holdings, I'm a shareholder. I've given money to all of these projects because they make a lot of sense to me and I use them all. And they're centralized, decentralized, there's stable coins in there, there's the FTX platform, which is the first compliant institutional platform I can find that my auditors and my compliance department finally agree to let me use to store value. And these are the, those are the kind of things that really matter to me. And I have to disclose, yes, I'm a shareholder in FTX. I'm also a paid spokesperson. So I'm, you know, I'm, 
I'm eating my own cooking, but I'm also talking about the merits of their compliance platform. Esther. I'm constantly trying to find a way, the path of least resistance, to invest my capital, redeploy it. I have to look around the world for opportunities. I have to be diverse. And, you know, crypto to me, when it was being frowned upon by regulators in a very harsh way, if you recall, 2017 was probably the height of when regulators were cramping, clamping down on tokens and different ways to, to, to tokenize assets like hotels and everything else back then. And as a result, I'm so involved in the traditional financial services market where I'm highly regulated and I have to report almost monthly to both my internal auditors, compliance department, and external regulators all around the world that that's the world I'm used to. And I saw no relief coming from regulators. And then what turned me around, what changed me completely was when the Canadians, the OSC, granted the very first crypto exchange license attached to a dealer broker a compliant platform. It wasn't rogue anymore. They told Canadian citizens, you can transfer your cash out of your bank into this centralized wallet and you can trade Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. They were moving forward with policy that was regulated. And I immediately started investing in that because I saw it coming. I saw the writing on the wall. And I've also made the assumption, this is a personal assumption, that the OSC, the regulator that granted that world order for the first time, a dealer broker, was well in touch with the SEC and other regulators around the world. They talked to each other every day. Maybe Canada was being used as a petri dish or an experiment to try it. And it's been wildly successful. That's when I got involved in Wonderfy, became a shareholder there. Wonderfy bought Bitbuy, which was the first regulated exchange. And now that company has 800,000 registered compliant crypto accounts. It's the model for the rest of the world. So I got on a plane, I went to the United Arab Emirates, Switzerland, England, South America, and I started showing these different regulators, look what the Canadians are doing. Can we do the same thing here? And that's exactly how I'm spending my time now, trying to open up these new markets with the policies that have been put in place, tested, and proven, and proven to win. me is I've been layering in now for 36 months. I started at 2.5%, went to 7 then we went past 15 Now, in portfolio theory, if you're running you know, a mandate such as a sovereign fund, let me give you the rules by which those big boys play. And I'm using the same philosophy for crypto. We have 11 sectors in the S&P 500. Portfolio theory would tell you never more than 20% in any one sector, never more than 5% in any one stock or bond. That's diversification. And that's basically how 99% of sovereign wealth is managed by indexers like me and many others that are like me. And so I've done the same thing in crypto. I've said, OK, I think crypto will be the 12th sector of the economy in 10 years. I'm going to treat it that way now in the operating company. That means I can put up to 20 percent of our operating capital into the crypto space. And then I want diversification. So I've basically done exactly that. My largest holdings right now are Ethereum and Bitcoin. That's not a big surprise, but I also have a big position. In, in USDC, big position in FTX as an equity, which is a private company, and then on down, Paul for India and other countries like that, like what he's doing. I bought a piece of that. Love what's going on in all of, in the Serum Project, Solana. I'm a big fan of what you know Sam Bankman Fried is doing. These things all make sense to me, but in the per, you know in the proportions of diversification. Now that portfolio. I'd say about eight weeks ago was at 21%. Now it's down at about 18. There's been a big correction in the market, but you've got to hold your nose and get used to the volatility. And it, let me, it lets me adjust positions. I can add a little bit to my USDC. My compliance department does, doesn't consider USDC a money market or, or a proxy for cash. They consider it a highly volatile equity. That's because of what's been going on in stable coins. So I'm limited to a 5% weighting there. And I'm trying to get some policy while I'm here in Washington. Remember, we go right back to that. Give me one thing. Just give me policy on stable coins and let the market compete. And I can put a lot more into that space because I've got a lot of cash on my operating company balance sheets. And I have so nowhere to put it. And inflation is 6 7 8%. And I'm getting 45 basis points in a bank. That's really crazy. I could do a lot more with stable coins.